Hello friends, how are you? Welcome to Saral Japani YouTube channel and today is lesson 23, Japanese names. In today's lesson, we shall learn about some important aspects of nomenclature in Japan. That is how names are given and some generic rules in naming people. So we begin with surnames or it's called last name in some parts of the world. So until around 150 years ago, the common Japanese population was not allowed to maintain family name, that is surname or last name, unlike other parts of the world. So they basically they were not allowed to keep any surname. So they only had the first name. Only the rulers, officials and other high class people, including religious leaders, scholars, doctors were allowed to have surnames. Then what happened? after uh, before uh, like 150 years ago from now there was a famous emperor whose name was Meiji so you can know about him on the internet emperor Meiji he brought many changes in the society in Japan and one of which was he allowed the common people to keep surnames so that was a major change brought in the Japanese society and once he did that many new surnames appeared because there was no rule for people to uh, to think of uh, their surnames. So they randomly selected names based on their surroundings, their professions and the places where they lived. So in the next slide, we will see some examples of such surnames and the logical reasoning or the meaning of those surnames. Surnames in Japanese continued. So first surname we shall look into is Honda. So till now, like we have pronounced it as Honda. That is, we know the famous car company, the motor vehicle company Honda. So this is basically Honda in Japanese. And as you can see here, uh, let me activate the screen pointer. So as you can see here, Honda. So if you have uh, done the kanji lesson in my series. Uh, most likely one of the lessons between lesson 17 and 20. So there we have discussed about these kanji symbols. This is the kanji for hon, which is root or origin or wood. And this is the kanji for rice field, which is called ta. And it will be ta when it, it appears at the beginning of the word. And since this is at the end of the word, so this is a suffix and it this and uh, that's why it is da here, not ta. So this is Honda. So Honda means root or origin of the rice field. So most likely people who worked in the rice field, whose ancestors worked in the rice fields, they might have kept this, might have selected this name as their surname. Then we have now this rice field comes in the beginning, so it becomes ta and not da. And this is the kanji for naka, which means inside. So this is ta naka, tanaka. So this is again a very, very popular surname in Japan. And this means inside a rice field. So this is rice field, this is inside, so inside a rice field. A very popular surname in Japan, tanaka. Third, we have nakamura. So Again, this Naka now comes to the beginning of the word and this is Mura. Mura means village. So Nakamura means inside the village. So the, uh, the people who kept this word as their surname, they must be living in the villages. So they just use this uh, combination of these two symbols as their surname. And it started uh, called as Nakamura. Then we have Murayama. So now Mura comes in the beginning and this is Yama. We know this is the kanji for hills or mountains. So Nakam, uh, sorry, Murayama, which means village in the hills. Now Yama comes to the front, Yama Moto. So again, Hon and Moto. So both represents the same kanji symbol, which is the root or origin or the base. So here 
the meaning is that the base of the mountain. So this is mountain, the root that is the base of the mountain, Yamamoto. Now this Hon comes to the front once again. So where from where we started, we have got back there again. Hon and this is Ma. Ma means truth or reality or something genuine. So Hon Ma and it is pronounced uh, also as Homma for the sake of easiness. And this means origin of truth or reality. So this is origin. This is truth reality. So this is the origin of truth reality. So this kind of surnames also people used to keep. Then we have Maher and this is Mia, Mamia, which means genuine shrine. So this is the symbol for genuine or true or real. And this is the symbol for a Buddhist temple or a shrine. So a very genuine or uh, holy shrine that is Mamia. So these are some of the very popular surnames in Japan, which are still in use. And 150 years ago, people started keeping these uh, surnames. And after that, their descendants, their family, their next generations, they also naturally got these surnames from their ancestors or their parents and grandparents. In this way, these surnames propagated, propagated in the Japanese society. Few more surnames, Yamada, following the same principle. So Yamada means rice field in the mountains. We have Suzuki, which is bellwood or bell tree. So key means tree that you know. We have done this in the kanji chapter. Then we have Murakami. Mura means village. Kami means above. So this is the kanji for above something. So this means Murakami means the village superior or the head of the village. Matsumoto. Matsumoto means pine tree roots or wood because Matsu is pine tree and this is the wood or root or, or the origin. So Matsumoto means pine tree roots or pine wood. Nishimura. Nishi means the west direction and Mura is village. So maybe village in the western part of Japan from there it originated and that's why the name Nishimura that is village in the west. Then we have Inoue which means above the well. So this is the kanji for well. And this is the, again the kanji for above. So above the well. So the hidden meaning is that rise up in life. And the final one is Ogawa. So this you know, this is the kanji for river. And this is the kanji for small, something small. So a small river, a narrow river, a shallow river, that is Ogawa. So people living beside such narrow streams or rivers, they might have kept this uh, word as their surname. So in this way, there are a lot of many others. So we selected the most simple ones for which the kanjis are simple ones. So we selected some of those and this is how the surnames were formed in Japan. And uh, as uh, we mentioned, like, 150 years ago this happened and after that people started keeping these surnames and in today's world also these surnames are uh, very very popular. Next we move on to the first names how the first names appear in Japan. So to begin with we we look into some male first names that is masculine first names the male gender Taro. It literally means the eldest son, but it's kept as the first name as well. Ichiro is again, its literal meaning is the first son of the family, that is the eldest son. So Ichiro is a given name. Taro is a given name. Kenta. Kenta means strong and healthy. So that's why it's a masculine name. And uh, this name is quite popular in Japan, Kenta. Next is Akio. Akio means bright, clear. It may even mean husband or a man in general. Akio. Then we have Terao. Terao, again, its literal meaning is Buddhist temple at the slope of a mountain. So all these are uh, male gender names and the red indications here, it implies that generally, Generally, 
uh, the male names end with O or Ta. So this is not always the case, but as I said, it's general in generic sense. This is the case. So you will find this O and Ta in the male names. So these are not present in the female names. So these suffixes are always present in the male names and besides this also there may be other male names as well. But these when the names end with these sounds, those are basically names of the masculine gender. Next some female first names. Momoko, which means peach girl that is as sweet as peach. Mariko, real true village. Hanako, as we know, Hana means flower. So Hanako means flower girl or as beautiful as flower. So from the first three, in the first three, you can see that the words end with ko. So this ko is basically, it denotes a girl. And in most of the names, again, this is a in general. So it's not necessary that every name will be having uh, this ko, but many names in Japan ends with ko and these are all female names. So Momoko, Mariko, Hanako. Then we have Sakura, which is cherry blossoms. Ichika, 1000 flowers. And Hina, this is Hina is again, he means sun or day and na means green vegetables. So overall this word represents something youthful. So all these are female names. And uh, this ko is typically a female suffix, feminine suffix. And uh, we just discussed male and female names. So there is another section which is neutral gender. So some names are uh, unisex names as well. So let's now take a look at such unisex names in Japan. And this is not the uh, full list. These are just examples. So Kazumi, Izumi, Itsuki, Kokoro, Masaki, Minato, Mitsuki, Naomi, Natsu, Rei, Ryuko, Sora, Shinobu, Shizu, Takemi, Tamaki, Tatsu, Toshimi, Yoshika, Yoshimo, Yuri, Nozomi, Akemi, Akiho, Hiromi, Kayo, and Kazu. So these are all examples of neutral gender names. And these are again few examples only. So there is a, uh, the, the, the list is quite exhaustive. So these are few examples of neutral gender names. So that's all for today, friends. We have understood the nomenclature of the surnames and some basic generic rules used for uh, the used in the given names of Japanese people. So that's all for today. In the next lesson, we shall come up with something, uh, some new topic. Till then, mata imasho.